So to give you an idea of what I'm doing, I've basically just been trolling through Screen Rant and CBR and just like searching for like random article headlines to try and get some content ideas. And I was actually trying to find things that were spinning more of a positive note on things and being like, oh, cool, yeah, these people agree with my views on the MCU or Star Wars or something like that. Or somebody was talking about the new, like, the Batman footage, which, by the way, I do plan to talk about that on uh, the YouTube channel at some point, shameless plug. I started, like, you know, just trolling through stuff, just trying to find different things. Like I said, trying to find a positive side of things. But what I ended up coming across was just like a bunch of selections of just really dumb sounding headlines. And the headlines themselves were never necessarily awful. But combined with like the pictures that they were using for the posts, I could tell these were going to be articles that I was going to mostly disagree with. And I'm curious to see what they are. In one of the videos on our YouTube channel, I actually specifically called out an article by CBR where they talked about like 10 different ways that the Christopher Nolan movies aged really poorly. That article honestly just kind of pissed me off. It was just clearly somebody who didn't really know what they were talking about, who just picked random things from like random Reddit comments and said, oh, this is why the film's aged poorly. This doesn't really feel like the case with these articles. This kind of feels more like things that I'm just going to softly disagree with, but it's not really anything that's going to make me like want to be like angry at the writer like that article was I, I i will say this i haven't read any of these articles so i have no idea what any of them are really like containing outside of what you know the basic you know image is going to be i'm curious nonetheless and like i said the everything just kind of like coalesced where i was like okay i just kind of have to make this work in my favor but without further ado let's let's get into this and see uh let, let's let's see what the deal is so starting off with Screen Rant's article is 10 PG and PG-13 movies that should have been rated R, according to Reddit. That's a really safe way of saying, we stole this from Reddit and we kind of agree with it, but because it's slightly controversial to nerds, we don't want to fully agree with it, which I find hilarious. The Motion Picture Association, formerly the MPAA, has labeled Hollywood's adventures since the development of its rating system in 1968. Sometimes, though, the given rating seems a little off, be it a little due to extreme violence or partial nudity. Some films simply toe the line between ratings while others seem outright mislabeled. Redditors are always quick to point fingers at several specific films, many of which have been notorious over the years for this very reason. Some Redditors' examples are just particularly intense PG-13, others received a PG rating and seems as if they should have just gone for R. Instead, as the PG-13 rating was not established until July 1st, 1984. So let's see what number 10 is. Taken! Okay, I'm interested to see their logic. A deleted user cited Taken as an example of a movie that pushed its PG-13 rating. E-Step replied saying, There was an 18 here. We don't really see how you can get past the scene where he hooks the guy up to the mains electricity. There seems to be a Redditor consensus that the British Board of Film Certification took the particular issue with the torture scene. The plot follows Brian Mills, a former government agent trying to build a stronger relationship with his daughter, blah 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 blah. I don't really agree with this one. Now... I will give credit where it's due. It's been probably, I'd say somewhere between like three to five years since the last time that I watched the first Taken movie. I wasn't a big fan of it when it first came out. I thought that it was really, really poorly made from a technical standpoint and the whole fucking shaky cam uh, fascination of the early 2000s just like nauseated me. Uh, I, I do remember the scene that they're talking about in particular and it's really not that graphic. It's kind of just like... It, it just kind of happens like I can think of way worse torture scenes that happen in PG-13 movies I mean there's a bunch of way more violent stuff in films like James Bond I mean the the, the fucking garden hose scene from Casino Royale I mean like I, I would argue like the whole like thing of him like hooking a guy up to like an electricity box and torturing him I, I mean it's harsh don't get me wrong like it doesn't belong in a PG movie but I, I would disagree that Taken pushed the PG-13 rating. I really don't think that it did. Maybe I'm alone in that assumption. Maybe this is a common thing that people talk about. I think this just comes down to the issue of, like I said at the beginning, like I was never a big fan of Taken in the first place, so I might be misremembering the film a little bit and I might be putting like my own bias on it, but I don't remember this movie really being that harsh, so I'm sorry I disagree with you already, Screen Rant or Reddit, whoever you are. Airplane. I already know what they're doing this for, and I can already tell you that I'm going to agree with it, but there is something very important that we need to talk about. While it is a strong contender for the funniest movie of all time, Airplane has no business being PG. 
On top of nudity, there are expletives and sexual innuendo consistently placed throughout the runtime. Faithless195 cited the nudity saying, for those that haven't seen it, Airplane had a nice pair of blank on screen for a solid couple of seconds. I do agree with that. The movie definitely is not child friendly, right? Number one, it's a film that's all kind of like, the, the humor is so quick witted and it's so consistently like torn between physical humor and dialogue humor that number one, kids just aren't going to get any of the jokes. But number two, like they said, there's plenty of like foul words. There's a ton of like sexual innuendo. There's a ton, a ton of double entendres. And yeah, there's straight up just like, there's straight up just like full topless nudity in the film at one point. This is one of those cases though, where you have to remember the time that this movie came out. Back in the 1980s, and we're talking literally 1980, right? 1980, prior to that, and prior to that, the R rating just wasn't very common. The MPAA looked at movies in a very different light, uh, uh, especially when it came to comedies. They viewed comedies as something that, like, everybody was sort of available to see. It wasn't viewed in the same way as a bunch of other films were. Like, when you go back and you look at all the films that were rated R back in the 70s and the 80s, a lot of them were either, like, really harsh war films or they were social commentary films that were all, like, heavily dramatized. Very, very few of them, if really any of them I can think of off the top of my head, were comedies. Even less so, sketch comedies. And even less so than that, like, slapstick comedies. They just weren't considered, like, heavy films that anybody was going to really look that deeply into. And it's not that, like, the MPA didn't bother to do it, and it's not like they didn't sit there and go, oh, yeah, Airplane has nudity and all this fun stuff. Like, they, they knew that it was in there. But, I'm my, like, my point being is, like, this example, it holds water when you watch it today, but as soon as you backtrack and realize, oh, this film is, you know, over 30 years old, well, now, all of a sudden, it's like, okay, well, the argument doesn't really hold a whole lot of water because rating was completely different back in 1980 the lost world jurassic park user quad 9363 cites jurassic park 2 as one of the more inappropriate pg-13 films as they say a lot of blood from a guy getting eaten above a waterfall guy gets eaten alive by compies and blood flows from off screen also that trailer scene is very intense um I feel like this guy is just like, this particular user on Reddit is just very, very squeamish, it sounds like. Uh, I mean, because I know all the things that he's talking about very vividly. I've seen all the Jurassic Park movies probably like 19 times a piece just in like the last couple of years. I love these films, man. But like the scene where like the guy gets like pulled up into the waterfall or whatever and he gets eaten and like the blood like kind of like drips down into it. It's very, very brief. It's not like there's like this cascade that turns the entire waterfall red and the characters are all bathed in like this ethereal glow through somebody's macabre organs right that's not what happens it's like the guy gets pulled up and out there's like a crunch it goes like blah, 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 and then it's done this is the exact same complaint as like saying that you know that scene in captain america where they're fighting on top of like the fighter jet or whatever like towards like the end of the film and like captain america punches one of the dudes and he like pops up and he falls back into one of the propellers and like goes and it's just like a spray of blood that goes backwards it's the exact same complaint as saying that particular scene means that the entirety of Captain America deserves to be rated R. It really isn't, and it's really nothing that uncommon for a PG-13 movie to show. As for the rest of this guy's complaint, the guy getting eaten alive by the compies is really not any more graphic than anything I've ever seen in the PG-13 movie, so I just, I straight up just don't even know what he's talking about. The trailer scene, it is very tense, you're right, but I can think of like 19 PG-13 movies that are way more intense than that. I mean, that's kind of more indicative of making a good film is that you feel very intimidated by it. It doesn't necessarily mean that the film deserves to be rated R. Poltergeist. User Judge Death one noted that the 1982 Poltergeist was a PG-rated film. Others focused on the scene where a paranormal investigator enters the family's first floor bathroom only to pull off his own face. Oddly enough, this expertly crafted, legitimately scary clown scare didn't receive a mention. I actually do agree with this one. Again, you've got to remember the time frame that this film came out in. It was 1982. But I do agree, the film definitely did not deserve a PG rating. It should have been rated R. Even if there's not a ton of ultra-violent content or a bunch of swearing or anything like that. The film is 
especially if the time frame it came out was fucking horrifying. There is no reason that that film should have been rated PG and people should have been allowed to like take their kids to go see it. Absolutely not. I agree with this entry. Gremlins. Yeah, I completely agree with this. I don't even need to read this entry. Gremlins gave me nightmares for like three years straight when I first saw that fucking film. I was like, uh, I don't know, how old was I when I saw that? Like maybe six or seven. So I was old enough to like remember it. Gremlins should not have been rated PG. I, I just, I agree. I don't even need to talk anymore about it. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. All right, um, let's see. First three Indiana Jones films all have a particular scenes that push the limits of the PG and PG-13 ratings. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is the tamest of the three by a substantial margin. It's also the only one of the three to earn a PG-13 rating. This is because of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. The plot follows Indy as he tries to save an entire Indian village's children from the clutches of a sadistic cult leader. The film is a whole very dark, awkwardly juxtaposed with dated juvenile humor, but the PG-13 rating primarily originated from a scene where the villain pulls a beating heart from a man's chest. This was the most frequently mentioned scene in the Reddit thread for good reason. Reddit user Druji Parade took issue with the scene, comparing Temple of Doom and a certain intense Batman film. They said Temple of Doom was PG. It had children slaves, that guy that Indy punches into a big roller which is shown covered in blood after he's crushed, a person's heart getting ripped out of their chest, people getting eaten alive by alligators. The second indie film is occasionally quite creative, but doesn't quite know who to appeal. That's what I read. It doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with the content. I guess. Th I think this is another case of me just like, it, it's been a while since I've watched Temple of Doom, so maybe, maybe I need to go back and rewatch it. But I see these scenes mentioned a lot when people are talking about these films, where they're like, wow, man, these movies were like surprisingly really dark. Again, it was the early 80s, man. This really was not an uncommon thing to see. I mean, the uh, Last Crusade, when did that film come out? Hold on. Because um, Last Crusade was... Um, Indiana Jones, Last Crusade. When did this come out? Um, 1989. So tail end of the tail end of the 80s is when this film came out. Like there's there's almost six whole years between these films. The MPAA like completely changed by the time that the last film came out. I could see it like earning a PG-13 rating. Definitely not an R rating. It definitely does not deserve R. I mean, when you consider that like. Pirates of the Caribbean is rated PG-13, man. Those movies are, like, surprisingly graphic for a PG-13 movie. So, if Indiana Jones can get away with it, Pirates of the Caribbean can get away with it. I don't really agree with this entry, but I get, but I understand it much more so than the first few entries. The Dark Knight. I kind of figured this one was going to be on there since it was in the thumbnail. 2008's The Dark Knight pushed the boundaries of the PG-13 rating pretty much to the limit. A deleted account on the Reddit thread seems to agree, saying... Quote, the Dark Knight definitely pushed the limit for PG-13 in my book. Scenes like the pencil trick and the cell phone belly bomb are especially dark. Mermaid Rampage, however, added that Nolan's Batman trilogy was entirely blood-free. That's actually not true. If you actually pay attention to the details of the film and how it was shot, it's not bloodless. It's just far more realistic in the scenes that it shows. So, like, case in point, like, for the pencil trick or whatever, you know, where he bops the guy's head down on the pencil and he, like, tips over and dies or whatever... Well, well, the camera's angled in a way that we don't actually see the, the pencil, like, go into his head, right? We just kind of see, like, the shift, and then the camera, like, kind of pans over, and the guy topples over. So, we don't really see anything. Same thing with, like, when he puts the knife in the guy's mouth and rips it out or whatever, when he stabs the two guys and pulls himself up. Like, it's very, very quick moments where if you're not paying attention, you're not even entirely sure what exactly just happened. But, when somebody gets shot, there's actually, like, a blood spray. There's, like, a puff or whatever. The thing is, man, is, like, bodies don't, like, spurt blood when they're shot. That's always a creative decision that people go to. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you hit somebody in, like, an artery, then, yeah, of course it's going to, you know, whatever. But if you actually, like, look when these scenes happen in films like The Dark Knight, like, when the bank owner gets, like, shot in the chest, like, at the beginning of the film, or when Gordon gets, like, shot in the back after he tackles the mayor, like, during, like, the middle of the film, there is actually, like, a puff of blood. So, the, I actually do agree. The Dark Knight did push the PG-13 rating pretty, pretty freaking far. It, I don't, I'm not going to say that it pushed it so far that it deserved to be rated R, but if only because of how insanely intense this film is, I do agree that it really, really did push the limits. It was, it, it's a rough film to watch on your first time through. Not rough in the sense of its content, but like you were just sitting there like on the edge of your seat wondering what the hell is going to happen. I, I, I partially agree with this one. I partially agree. All right, Critters 2, the main course. Um, yeah. All right, number two, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I already know what they're talking about. They're talking about the end scene where, like, 
everybody reacts a different way to the arc being open and seeing it for the first time. You know, like one dude's head like freaking explodes, another dude melts and all that. I mean, you can even see like, you know, down here at the bottom where they're talking about exactly that. Um, I, I do get what they're going for. And this is, I think, the exact same opinion I would have back for um, Temple of Doom. I can agree that it probably should have been a PG-13 rating, even if it was the early 80s, which again, like, I feel like these people are really overlooking that fact of like, it was the early 80s, man, that these, like, the, the reason why I've agreed with some of these entries is because they were more recent, and I kind of agree they pushed it a little bit further, but like, the early 80s was just such a different time for the MPAA, man, it was such a different time for filmmaking in general, like, things were just incredibly incredibly different in terms of content and how people really viewed it i will say that i, I agree raiders of the lost ark does push it a little bit but considering the fact that it was like the early 80s it was all practical effects it wasn't cgi it didn't look very real i gotta disagree with it. it it's a hard one to disagree with because i know what they're talking about and the scene is pretty brutal but i don't particularly think that it's great it's great it's accurate that's what i meant to say drum roll what is number one? Let's see. Jaws. I probably should have known this was going to be number one. I feel like this was probably the most obvious thing that was going to be number one. I suppose. I mean, yeah, it's really, really intense and it is very, like, tough, I guess. But it's not, like, it's violent and it's really, really freaky. It's terrifying. Like, I, for one, I'm fucking horrified of the ocean I, I hate everything that lives in there and in particular sharks are my worst fear ever i hate them so much but outside of that man this is the same like this is 1975 and so i don't feel like this really uh, this doesn't really hold up today like i mean even i'll admit as somebody who can hardly even look at a shark without feeling like anxious and like horrified even i have to admit this is really pushing it like the film is not that violent it's really clear that like it's dummies and stuff like that it's again it's like it's not cgi it's not really rough to watch i just don't agree with this article like so i mean overall this is definitely not the worst article on screen Rant i've ever read i feel like the next two are gonna push me a little further to my limit the the majority of these entries aren't bad but i do disagree with like 80 percent of this article or like 75 percent of this article Mostly just because these Reddit commenters, like, are clearly just kind of ignoring the time period that these films were made in. Like, this this was such a different period, man. Just, like, ratings weren't... They just weren't done the same way that things are done now. Like, yeah, if these movies were released nowadays, a lot of these films, or all of these films, really, would be PG-13 or possibly R, with the exception of The Dark Knight and Jurassic World... Um, sorry, The Lost World, not Jurassic World, and Taken, those films would completely still remain the exact same rating. The rest of these would probably be pushing it a little bit, and they'd probably be changed, but overall, gotta say, not not a great showing, Screen Rant, or Reddit, I guess. It's not Screen Rant, whatever, right? Screen Rant wrote it, but technically it's Reddit. Reddit. <laughs>